The next talk that I want to give is talking about why we can believe in the titular authors of the Gospels. That's the talk. And by titular authors, I mean that the people who are named as the Gospels authors, those people, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And I'm going to give you reasons why we as Christians are confident that Matthew was wrote by Matthew, Mark was wrote by Mark, Luke was wrote by Luke, and John was wrote by John. Now, before I do that, I just want to talk about the fact, uh, how Christians understand inspiration, and what we understand inspiration to be. As I said in the previous video, we understand inspiration as the minds of men being elevated to such a point that they can grasp what God is doing in history, who God is, and how God wants us to live. And they do this by capturing that message that God wishes to convey. It, but it is a human enterprise. These are human words. It's, they aren't operating ex machina. And our understanding of inspiration is far broader. It includes that God's Holy Spirit inspires works of art, works of music, works of architecture, all for the glory of God. And the scriptures stand in a unique place amongst the Christians because they have been identified by us as the place to go to for our liturgical worship, to use in liturgical worship and to draw from its teachings to form our doctrine, our understanding of ourselves and the understanding of the world. But that doesn't mean that God can't inspire um, other people, the Holy Spirit, I know, inspired some people to set up a charity that's worked and helped children right across Europe. And that was inspired by God. But that kind of inspiration that we're talking about outside of Scripture is what we would call personal inspiration. It doesn't have authority for any other Christian apart from the Christian that, that, that it speaks to. It's very different from the Islamic understanding of inspiration, which is this idea of Allah giving his words to an angel Gabriel who takes them to Muhammad, who repeats them and then scribes write them down. It's a very different understanding of inspiration. Now, we admit that the question of the titular authors is an important question. I, I, I don't deny it's an important question, but it's not a fundamental question. If it was to work out that we couldn't identify who the, titular, who the authors of the Gospels were, it wouldn't impact the message of the Gospels. Because the Church has established these Gospels as authority based upon its message. It isn't dependent upon its authors. And we can see that because the Church doesn't know who wrote Hebrews. There is no author of Hebrews that's identified. We suspect it was written by Paul, but it's still there inside the scriptures. And the fact that a text is anonymous doesn't mean that it can't be trusted. Encyclopedias are anonymous, but they're full of facts. Telephone books are anonymous, but they're completely reliable. It doesn't matter whether you know the author of a book, What's important is, is the message of the book reliable? Furthermore, as we've said, it's the message that is the important thing, not the authorship. The message is what is, defines the Christian faith, not the authorship. However, all that being said, Christians do believe that we know who the authors are. And I'm going to explain why. The first time that anyone sought to doubt that all the titular authors of the Gospels was in 400 AD. It was a man called Faustus. And he questioned who had written the earliest Gospels. And Saint Augustine, replying to Faustus, wrote thus, Because there is a succession of testimonies to the books 
And this is speaking about the writings of Hippocrates. He was saying, nobody doubts the writings of Hippocrates. And he goes on to say, because there is a succession of testimonies to the books from the time of Hippocrates to the present day, which makes it, um, makes it unreasonable, either now or hereafter, to have any doubt of the subject. Now, it's important to recognise something, that in all ancient works of antiquity, authorship was always ascribed after the fact. That was normal in antiquity. And most authorship was ascribed hundreds of years after the texts were written. But once again, the New Testament texts are groundbreaking in that their authorship is ascribed far earlier far earlier, within a hundred years of the text being produced. Now, we know one of the reasons why we can believe that Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, John wrote John, and Luke wrote Luke, is because of the writings of the Church Fathers. Tertullian, writing in 225 AD, and I want you to remember two things, the dates and the places and the people. So Tertullian writing in 200 to 225 AD in modern, in what we would call Turkey today, wrote that Matthew wrote his gospel, Mark wrote his gospel, Luke wrote his gospel, that Matthew was an apostle, John was an apostle, and Mark and Luke were companions of the apostles. Clement of Alexandria, writing in 180 AD to 200 AD in Egypt, wrote, and he was a student of Pontinus of Alexandria, and he wrote that Mark wrote his gospel based on Peter's teaching, and that Matthew and John wrote from their recollections of Christ. John specifically was asked to write to cover the details that were missed by the other Gospels. That's from the writing of Clement of Alexandria. Um, and he also points out that Matthew's was originally written in Hebrew. Irenaeus, writing in 180 AD in Lyon, France, who was a student of Polycarp, who himself was a student of the Apostle John, wrote, that Matthew wrote his uh, gospel in Hebrew and that Luke was a companion of Paul, that Mark was a disciple of Peter and that John wrote his gospel in Ephesus. And that's Irenaeus writing in 180 AD in Lyon in France. Furthermore, the Mauritanian canon, which is nonetheless a, a anonymous writing, we don't know the author, it's named after the person that discovered it, was a late second century document and it lists 22 books of the New Testament or that would then become known as the New Testament later. And in a fragment we capture that John wrote his gospel at the urging of his friends and that Luke wrote his gospel based on the accounts of other people's reports. And this is a late second century document. Justin Martyr was writing in the second century in Ephesus, and he was writing between the year 100 and 165 AD. And he says that we have the memoirs of the apostles, and he doesn't list them. But he says that the church has the memoirs of the apostles in 100 AD. Now, what's important about this memoirs of the apostles phrase in the writings of Justin Martyr is that Justin Martyr was the teacher of a man called Tatian and Tatian was the one who wrote the diatassaron and the diatassaron is which the, the term diatassaron means through the four is a weaving together of the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So where would Tatian get the idea from 
that these four Gospels are the memoirs of the Apostles. He would get them from Justin Martyr. Now, Papias, whose works and writings have been lost to us, but of which quotations of his works and writings survive through history and were then quoted by Isubius, a church historian in the fourth century, wrote this. And it's important to know that Papias also knew Polycarp and was a disciple of John. Mark wrote down Peter's preaching, though not in order, and Matthew originally wrote his gospel in Hebrew. Now, what does all of this mean? I want you to think about this for a second. We've got, we've got multiple different fathers of the church talking about who wrote the gospels, and they're doing it in different times and in different places and their accounts synergize easily without conflict or contradiction. It takes no great massaging of the, these statements, these beliefs, to understand that they held something in common. They aren't fighting one another. And that clearly to a historian tells us that there was a much more ancient tradition before 100 AD that states that Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, and John wrote John. And that this tradition spread throughout the church with the preaching of the Gospels and was then written down by these church fathers in different times and in different places. Now, in addition, in addition to this evidence of this ancient tradition, we also have physical evidence. Every manuscript that we have available to us, where it talks, where it has who wrote this gospel, all of them that say Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, and John wrote John. There isn't any other claimed authorship in the textual evidence, none. There's no evidence at all. So a historian has to go with the evidence. They can't just go wherever they fancy and wherever they please. And most damning of fact to those who want to say that this was all just made up after the fact and that people were just inventing a mythology, there are two reasons why I would object to that argument. The first is the absence of any conflicting tradition. There is no conflicting tradition that says that actually Matthew was written by Peter and that Mark was written by Theophilus and that uh, um, John was written by Fiona. There's no competing tradition. There's no argument in the church about the authorship. Even the heretics aren't trying to argue that someone else wrote the Gospels. Nobody is. Even Celsus, who was a pagan critic of the Christian faith, didn't argue that someone else wrote the Gospels. So in other words, there's unanimous agreement about who wrote the Gospels, both amongst the Christians and amongst the critics of Christianity. This whole argument of the anonymous authorship of the Gospels is a completely modern affair. My second objection to that line of argument is simply this. If you were going to make up the titular authorship of the Gospel, why on earth would you ascribe one to Mark and one to Luke, who aren't even apostles? If you were just going to make it up, surely you would put all the Gospels as being penned or authored by an actual apostle, not by a companion of an apostle, because surely four eyewitness testimonies is better than two eyewitness testimonies and two accounts of eyewitness testimonies. So if you were going to make it up, surely you'd do a more decent job. Furthermore, if you were going to make up authorship for the New Testament, why did they leave Hebrews anonymous?
Why does the church leave Hebrews anonymous? Why doesn't it ascribe Hebrews to one of the apostles? Yes, it's speculated that Paul did it, but there's no writing on the manuscript, this was written by Paul. So clearly, the evidence is against the idea that these authors were invented. Because we see from the church fathers in early tradition, we see no other competing tradition, all of the physical evidence supports the tradition, and there is no evidence contrary to the tradition. It simply follows, if you are a man of reason and a man of intellect, or a woman, that you would follow the evidence where the evidence leads you. And the evidence leads you to the fact that the titular authors of the Gospels were indeed Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Any questions before I go on to my next talk? What about the Gospels of the Essenes and the yep. Sudai of Haidon? Yeah, so the, the brother asks about what about other Gospels that were written um, by other people, like the, es- the Gospel of the Essenes and so on. Well, the, the reality is that the presentation that I've done is to demonstrate that the titular authors of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are who they say they are. Discussion about other Gospels only demonstrates that if you were going to create another Gospel, you wouldn't take Matthew's Gospel and stick someone's name on it, you would actually just write the Gospel of Peter or the Gospel of the Ebionites, or the Gospel of Hebrews. You wouldn't take Matthew's Gospel and put another one on because everybody knew who Matthew's Gospels was and you'd be called out for it pretty quickly. All of the other Gospels, all of them, are far later than our earliest Gospel. The earliest Gospels that we have in history are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Every other Gospel was written century or two centuries later. Okie dokie. Any other questions before I move on? Okay. So my next talk 